Professor Barry Evans of the University of Surrey said that if SATCOM doesn't embrace 5G, um, SATCOM will be dead. I'm here at IBC, which is the most influential show on media broadcasting and entertainment. You might probably think, what am I doing here? Why am I at IBC 2018 here in Amsterdam? It's a great show for me as well as a YouTube creator. Take a look at that camera over there. As a matter of fact, it's not today that I'm going to be here. Today is another day. Today is a day that I'm going to General Dynamics in the Grand Hotel Krasnopolsky here in Amsterdam. This is the Rye. That's the old town. So that distance is about six kilometer or four miles or something like that. Um, and the good thing is, and I just received, and I'm not sure where I, oh yeah, I got it here. IBC gave me a ticket to get free rides. Thank you, IBC. Uh, not in the Uber, not in the taxi, actually a public transport. is the Grand Hotel Krasnopolsky. I'm almost there. Um, and as I said, it's only a few minutes walk from the station to, uh, to the hotel. I'm not sure exactly where to go. I will find out. You probably know general dynamics from this. Today, we talk about satellite communications. And that's related to the IBC here in Amsterdam. I'm not sure where to go. This is a large hotel in the city center of Amsterdam. I'm not sure, I think it's the Noble Room. Well, <laughs> probably somebody on the hotel room has smoking pot. Um, this is the first floor, so I'm lost. I'm totally lost. This is the back office. All right. I'll get us better. Okay. There's nobody here. Maybe my name. Maybe it's, maybe this is a different conference over here. So I arrived at the right location, and the, the conference already started. So that's something we have got to do, us as a community. Um, reduce by 90% for today the energy. That's a real challenge, I think, for the, for the future. And all of this depends on the sort of applications that we, uh, we're actually looking at. I just escaped the meeting from General Dynamics, which is just over there at the other side. Um, and there were some very interesting discussions going on. Professor Barry Evans of the University of Surrey said that if SATCOM doesn't embrace 5G, um, SATCOM will be dead. Well, he didn't say SATCOM will be dead. 
he said this was really difficult to find a business case for Safcom companies to survive in the future. And then there was a presentation of Robert Novak from ND Satcom from Germany and he explained the complete environment of satellite communications for mission critical push to talk. When we talk about Satcom, there we, we think about PPDR, Satcom providing links, just links uh, for push to talk uh, solutions and the more applications that Satcom can play an important role is it? For sure. So when people think about it, they mostly, satellite people, think it, think about it in a, in a certain way. They see a big teleport and then many cheap remotes. There are other ways to do it which can make it better. And in this case, if we're talking about push-to-talk, there is a distinct, distinction between push-to-talk and the mission-critical push-to-talk, as just been specified by the 3GPP, where they say everything above 300 milliseconds cannot be qualified as a mission-critical push-to-talk service. And if we're talking about geosatellites, it's impossible to do that via the, the hub approach, because with a hub approach, you need to go two hops, right, to reach one remote from the other. And you can only do it via a single hop, which is what we do with Andy Satcom. Okay. So that means only in that situation you can use mission-critical Satcom to serve public protection, disaster relief, or any other solution? No. If we're talking about geostationary satellites, then yes, mesh is the only option. Unless you have a user which is sitting at a teleport, which never happens, right? It's a theoretical option, but it never happens. Okay. Then a second question. We talk about 5G nowadays. Mm -hmm. Now, I understood that if SATCOM doesn't link up with 5G, it, it, it's, it's a dead end, is it? So, yeah, you can put it that way, but... We don't need anyone from the 5G or LTE or whatever industry coming to us and giving us some business. We can take some of it already ourselves. Example, you have a time in the past where the business was reserved only for the big mobile operators. The times when they were building the networks only are gone. Now you can have a network with a small e -Node B and a software-defined EPC and you can build your network, your private network, without them. There are some frequency, uh, frequencies being opened up, some initiatives all over the world which say, okay, we don't necessarily need to sell uh, expensive concessions for a few billions. We can give smaller chunks of bandwidth in which LTE can operate and in the future 5G and other organizations, institutions can build network for themselves. And this is what it makes the difference. Next to me is Tom Goebelbecker from General Dynamics. Hey, Tom, that was a great presentation today. Great day, actually. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Now, I heard from the professor from the University of Surrey that right. you need to hurry up, right? <laughs> That's right. 5G is coming. It is. And if you don't mix into 5G into satellite communications, satellite is dead. That's correct. It may be a little bit extreme about being dead, but it, it, we do need to adapt. You know, 5G is going to be out there, and, and from what uh, Professor Evans said today, you know, we've got to be able to make sure that the the uh, it's it's not only the the mobile side of things, but the satcom industry needs to adapt to it too. And and being able to you know, it's going to take not only the the space side of things, but also the ground segment side of things uh, for us to to adapt and and to be ready as that yeah. comes forward. But from a business point of view. This the development point of view, what do you do? You need to work on partnerships along the way. And there's some of the things that we can do in our portfolio to make sure that we're ready for that like first net? market. Well, for instance, we got to continue to make sure that we're developing the terminals that you need. Um, you know, as 5G, 5G is all about mobility. So we have on-the-move terminals and, and on-the-pause terminals that are available today. We need to continue to move in that direction. We need to continue to monitor the phased array marketplace that, okay. that's important for us to, to play in long term. And as that technology evolves, we need to be ready with that. Our, our partners in the modem space, they need to adapt too. You know, yeah. I heard today that the, the, the airspace needs to be addressed with, a, with what he called the new radio segment. 
doing that. So yeah. Yeah, that, that needs to be adapted to. So. Okay. so you also need to play a role in the 3GGP and support the 3GGP, I understand? We do. It's always important to be a part of the standards community and, and we, we take that very seriously. And you may ask yourself, why were these people lined up with these crazy shirts? Well, that was because of the General Dynamics Crazy Shirt Contest. And that contest, well, I didn't win with my white shirt, to be honest. It's right now, time to put this one on first. That's better. So, second day, IBC. Um, today is the exhibitor today. Actually, I was here yesterday. That was the Congress day. Just to give you an impression, this is... This is the show floor, to be honest. It's a huge show, it's huge. It's, it's, it's actually larger than Critical Communications World. Uh, IWC, APCO together. Um, so, you know, but I do know exactly where I have to be. So busy. Um, I'm lucky actually I'm already in and um, let's go to hole number one. General Dynamics had their specific day for dealers, distributors and, and, and a lot of people who are interested in their solutions. Today they're at the exhibition floor, they're just around the corner over here. So let's see if somebody is there. So just, just a quick question, I don't want to interrupt too much. How was, how was the day yesterday experienced by all of the people there? Did you get some feedback? We did, we did. We think it was very positive. You know, I think uh, you know, being a thought leader in the marketplace is pretty important to us. Um, you know, having all the experts that we did in that meeting to be able to talk from the, the different orbital slots, from the, the operators, to what's going to happen to 5G, to, you know, down to the ground segment. It's really important, and uh, and the feedback we got was uh, was rave reviews. So we're really pleased. And exactly that company is here in hole number 14, um, Small Mobile Labs. They joined the TCCA, the Critical Communications Association. Um, I hope somebody is able to talk to me about that move of the company. So let's find out. I think there's three basic technologies necessary to be able to bring this kind of product. Uh, next to me, as we walked to the booth of for Smart Mobile Apps, is Andreas Westhoff. You just had a presentation about 5G, about your right. solution, and you have the killer app, is it? Well, the killer app is, of course, a big word, but we have one of the killer apps, which is a multi-view application that enables the visitor of an event, might it be a sports event or a concert, to see on his smartphone um, the picture he wants to see. So imagine watching cricket and you can then decide what perspective you want to take. Yes. And that's one of the killer apps. Hopefully. But that also could be used in public safety industry? Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, think about drones. Every time you have a cableless camera and you want to get this information to the command center in real time as well. Yeah, then you have to have something that is mission critical communication in real time. And yes. in the best case, many to many. That means between a lot of people as well. All right. So, and you just joined the TCCA. So was there a specific reason to join the TCCA? Because the TCCA, when I look at the membership, you have manufacturers of two-way radios, uh, about uh, not only the radios, also the infrastructure, the accessories, consultants. And you're a different company, actually. That's true. Um, it is a lot of hardware companies, of course, and service providers. And there is not so much software yet. But software and managing, especially video, is something that could be essential for all critical communications. And we have seen our product is perfect for the market, but there is nobody in offering such a solution. And a couple of our partners asked us to be present there as well, to be honest. Okay, so next week we see each other at Critical Communications. Definitely, Vina. my pleasure. You have more time, you only have 
very limited time. Your agenda is totally full here. Um, it was good seeing you, good talking to you. Thank you and very much. And I'll see you next week. Yeah, definitely. Thank you.